Hi, I'm Phil Plants, Advanced Applications Manager with Microtrack here in Largo, Florida. At Microtrack, we've been designing, manufacturing, and delivering laser diffraction particle size analyzers for over 35 years. In that time, one of our key design targets has always been to provide our users with rugged, dependable instrumentation that's easy to use and maintain. With the S3500 Blue Wave series, we continue that tradition. By using all solid state lasers, detectors, and other electronic components, there's now virtually no requirement for the operator to interact with the optical bench other than to turn it on or turn it off. The only occasion that may require an operator intervention is to occasionally clean the sample cell. This can be identified by a high background alarm or failure to align. But before using this procedure, any alarm of this type should be investigated to see if the filling fluid is clean, the system has rinsed thoroughly, or residual surfactant from running samples is present. Any of these can cause high background, set zero issues, or alignment issues. Before beginning any cleaning procedure, it's best to rinse the system again before starting. In most cases, it will be dirt on the inside of the windows. In this short video, I'll talk you through the simple process of cleaning a microtrack sample cell. Please remember that in our case, we will be using deionized or distilled water. This is the first in a series of training videos to allow you, our customer, to learn more about microtrack technology, maintenance, and operation. Please visit the web often for new training videos. The first step in cleaning the cell is to drain the system. So first, we'll drain the system and make sure there's no fluid left in, in the system. If there's any question about this, you can tell by looking into the circulator bowl and seeing that it's empty. If you're using a solvent, it's necessary to return the system to water. To drain the system, merely move the cursor to the drain icon and the drain begins. In this segment, we'll talk about making sure that the system is free of any fluid and removing the sample cell for cleaning. As I mentioned, if there's any question about the fluid remaining in the system, you can tell by looking into the SDC bowl. Lift the door to the SDC bowl and view inside. I can tell by looking inside the bowl that it is empty and this means that the system is free of any fluid and now it is safe to remove the sample cell. To remove the sample cell, turn the knurled screw to the left until the door drops down. There are two things to mention about this area of the instrument. One is that there is a safety laser interlock. This interlock prevents the lasers from turning on when this door is in the down position. The other aspect of the sample chamber is that there is a gasket around the opening. This gasket prevents any dust or dirt particles from entering the optical system in the normal operation of the instrument. To remove the sample cell, merely turn the knurled nut at the top counterclockwise and lift up on the tubing. Grasp the cell holder by the handle and withdraw the sample cell. This is the sample cell that I'll be cleaning. Unlike other manufacturers, there's no requirement to disassemble the cell to clean it. In fact, to do so would raise other problems, so make it a rule not to disassemble the sample cell. In this segment, I'll show you how to clean the sample cell. Please use care when handling the sample cell because the windows on the outside have a coating. This coating is similar to that used in some expensive camera lenses. Fingerprints and oils from your hands or fingers will cause extra cleaning. To clean the inner surfaces of the sample cell window, do the following. In the sample cell cleaning kit, there are a couple of items that can be used. 
One is a chamois tip swab. This swab will fit into the cell opening very, very nicely. The other item for cleaning is a loop of pipe cleaner. Now I have previously used this loop, but I'm going to show you how to prepare one for your use. Merely take a length of 6 to 10 inches of the pipe cleaner, bend the loop, loop, and twist the bottom ends of the loop together. This also will now fit into the opening of the sample cell. I will use a special solution for cleaning this inside of the sample cell. This is a solution of 96 milliliters of water, 2 milliliters of liquid dish detergent, and 2 milliliters of phosphoric acid. The phosphoric acid will aid in cleaning any water deposits that may have developed on the inside of the sample cell. I will dip the loop into the solution and insert the loop into the opening. At this point the loop is too large for the opening so merely by squeezing the loop a small amount and then inserting the loop into the sample cell and withdrawing it the cell is now clean. It's very important not to get the solution on the outside of the window since it can damage the coating. It's also important in some areas to wear gloves and safety glasses. After cleaning dry the bottom of the cell and dry the top of the cell. At this point the cell should be nice and clean. In the next segment I'll show you how to replace the cell, fill the system, and do a successful set zero and alignment. Just as a review I'll show you how to insert the pipe cleaner into the sample cell. Push it through the sample cell and then withdraw it. Notice the pipe cleaner is cleaning along the outside edges. The other tool that can be used is the chamois tipped swab. That also can be entered into the opening and pushed through the sample cell. And notice that we make sure that the edges are also cleaned. Now that we've cleaned the sample cell, I'll show you how to replace it. The very first thing to notice about the sample cell is that there are two plates. One of the plates is at the top and the other is at the bottom. Notice that the plate at the top is smaller than the plate at the bottom. This is the correct orientation for the sample cell to be returned to the sample cell holder. Before we replace the sample cell, I want to point out a couple of things to you. Inside the sample cell holder are two O-rings. One is located at the bottom and one is located at the top. These can be easily viewed by using a small flashlight as I'm doing right here. Notice that these O-rings are in a special place. The O-rings are designed to remain in place when the sample cell is removed. We're just checking to be sure that the O-rings are in position. Another thing to notice is that in the rear of the sample cell holder is a small pin. When I replace the sample cell, I will push the sample cell to the back until the pin is contacted and the cell cannot be pushed further back. Now to replace the sample cell, we take the cell by the sample cell holder Loosen the knurled nut, turning counterclockwise, lift up on the tubing, and place the sample cell into the holder, forcing it as far back as possible to contact the pin. Now I'll turn the knurled nut clockwise, holding the sample cell in place, until the knurled nut becomes tightened just snugly. At this point, the sample cell is now replaced. We'll leave the sample cell door open 
so that when we fill the system for the first time, we can check just to be sure that there are no leaks in the sample cell compartment. The next step in replacing the sample cell to the sample compartment holder is to fill the system. We'll want to be sure that having replaced the sample cell, there will be no leaks. The first step in filling the system is to place the cursor over the fill icon. Press the left mouse button and the monitor shows us that a fill is in progress. During this progress, the system entirely is being filled with water. The SDC bowl, all tubing, and the sample cell are now being filled with water. The pump will turn on and off a few times to allow for deaeration. Deaeration assures that any bubbles or air have been removed from the fluid. Bubbles or air in the system will cause a high background or an alignment problem. When the system is completely deaerated, the screen dialog will disappear and the system is now ready for checking. At this point, it's valuable to check the system inside the sample compartment for any leaks. So it's just necessary to look for any fluid that may be surrounding the sample cell holder. Since the system is now filled and there is no evidence of any leaks, I can close the sample cell compartment door, turn the screw clockwise until the screw is snug. Then I return to the computer and start the flow of the instrument. The flow is set on 40%. Normal flow rates for most materials is between 40% and 55%. The flow has now been started and I'll now check the system for alignment and set zero. First thing to do is go to the measure tool, come down to auto align. You'll notice that the auto align has a check next to it. This means that during any set zero, the instrument will automatically align itself. The next thing to do is to start the auto alignment. You'll notice that there's a blue bar that states auto align. This means that auto align is activated. I will come up to the toolbar for set zero and click on the set zero icon. The very first thing that will happen is that an alignment will occur. The next thing that happens is that there's a measurement initialization in progress. This is the start of the set zero measurement. For this video, I've set the set zero time for 10 seconds. The normal set zero time for Blue Wave and S3500 is 30 seconds. Upon completion of the set zero and alignment, if it is successful, it will show a green bar at the left hand side of the screen. This shows the date and the time of the set zero and shows that all the background information is well within specification. If this were a poor set zero, it would be shown as red. In rare cases, the outside of the windows becomes smeared or dirty. If the inside cleaning doesn't solve the set zero or alignment problem, please contact your local service person or Microtrack directly for cleaning instructions and other technical assistance. I hope this is helpful to you. At Microtrack, we're aiming for 100% customer satisfaction. Should you have any comment or suggestion, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.